Hi, welcome to Insta Youth Group. Uh, we thought we'd start out with a fun, quick game. So I messaged some friends and asked them to send us uh, a video of themselves playing charades. Let's see what they came up with. You OPN, bet you won't be BM. We should be closer than friends. If you OPN, take that high road and hop in. Great acting, you guys. Martha was baking bread, Keaton was making wine, and Addie was taking a bath. And if you hadn't guessed yet, today we're talking a little bit about communion. Now at St. Paul, usually our fourth graders spend five weeks learning about communion, and then they would take their first communion this week on Monday, Thursday. Unfortunately, with the corona socially distancing us like crazy, that's not happening. We're really hopeful that those families will get to do that experience later, um, maybe in the summer or maybe in the fall. But we thought maybe we should talk a little bit about communion and its meaning. So. What do you remember about the first time that you took communion? I took my first communion when I was in sixth grade. My family didn't move to the Quad Cities until I was in fourth grade, and we didn't start going to St. Paul until I was in fifth grade, so I missed out on taking it when I, the classes when I was in fourth grade. So I ended up doing the classes when my sister was in fourth grade. And what I remember from that whole experience was, it was really a family bonding thing because it was like my parents, my sister, and I, and then, I think it was the first time at St. Paul that I really felt like I was surrounded by people who supported me. So what I remember from First Communion, I did all the classes, I made my chalice, here it is, and I remember being super nervous for it when we finally did it, and I got up there, I put my hands out like this, they gave me the wafer and I dipped it in wine, and once I tasted it, I was like, oh my gosh, this tastes like cardboard like I'm gonna have to do this for the rest of my life and it tastes like cardboard like whose idea was that we all when we all had it we all got together with our families on a Thursday night service and it was just a really good experience when we had it and we got these like robes these like robe things to put on and it was pretty cool it was part of a routine that like this is what you do at church on Sundays and until sixth grade I really didn't know what it was for I love watching kids take communion for the first time. For some kids, they make this really sour face because it's the first time they've like ever had wine before. And for other kids, they like have this really prideful look and they like walk up the aisle like, I'm an adult in the congregation. I can do all the adult things. <laughs> yeah, when Jesus sat down with his disciples, we call it the Last Supper because it was the last time that Jesus ate with his friends before he died. There are two stories that we really associate with this evening. Jesus and the disciples all gather around um, this big table. Uh, Jesus took the bread and blessed the bread. And he broke it and said, this is my body uh, given to you or given for you. And then he, blessed, he also blessed the wine and said, this is my blood shed for you. So how I remember the story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet is that it took place during the Last Supper. And back then, that was a super significant thing to do because usually it, the roles were reversed and it was someone low washing someone's high feet. So Jesus doing that was an act of his humility and his servanthood and him expressing that he was here to serve, not to be served. In both stories, Jesus gives his disciples a command. That's why we call this Mandate Thursday, or Maundy Thursday. In the communion story, Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. And in the foot washing story, Jesus says, you should do as I have done for you. So these traditions are that Jesus have passed down to us, we've been doing them for centuries. Then they've molded us into who we are. Traditions in our lives, like communion on Sundays or foot washing, um, on a mission trip, for instance, they help us remember that God has loved us in the past and it pushes us forward to love other people more. Now, God started traditions so that we can live a more connected life. And this year, you may have to start a new tradition, um, just like our fourth graders, to help you live a more connected life too. I think God wants us to be 
thoughtful about the traditions that we have and be thankful for the way that they're molding us into who we are. Absolutely. Let's sing another song and then close with our blessing. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. Those who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I have made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I tradition that we close with this blessing so that you may always remember you are a child of God holy and dearly loved Jesus loves you and so do I Try to okay. Okay. You can do this. I can do it <laughs> dang it Hey everyone, welcome back to St. Paul U. Finn, thanks for joining us today. Oh, you're welcome. So glad to be here.